is brought to you by Thermomix. Welcome to Hello Darling. Today my very special guest is Liz Parnov, former Olympian, winner of the Reason Australian Survivor. Liz will be chatting to me about her ups and downs of her career, her recipes for life, and we will celebrate her new beginnings with expressos martinis prepared for us by Thermomix. So let's meet Liz. When you can't reach the standards you're capable of, or feel like you're letting yourself and others down. Remember, there is no greater lesson than adversity. Hanover will bow out of this competition. Sometimes, achieving success in life is when you simply refuse to give up, to keep pushing, to persist. Hello, darling. Welcome to the show. Hello, darling. Thank you for having me. Just to start with the beginnings, you originally, you were born in Russia? Yes, I was born in Moscow in 1994. Oh, you are the only lady who admits the year of birth. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you, how young were you when you came to Australia? I was two and a half. Now, you also started your athletic career in a, in a very, very young age. Tell our viewers, how young were you when you started? So I was about seven years old when I started pole vaulting. Um, it happened very organically. My sister was 10 at the time and she started pole vaulting. And so I would just get taken down to the stadium with my mum and my dad and play in the sand pit. And then eventually over time, I started to get involved and I was pretty good at it. Amazing. And you're, you, I think you come from an athletic family mm -hmm. all together. Can you mention a few of, of, you know, journeys, athletic journeys, sports career of your family? Yeah, so my grandma won a bronze medal at the Mexico Olympics in the 400 metres. Wow. And then my auntie won a silver medal at the Sydney Olympics in pole vault. So I was raised in a very sporting family. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy to think that I have so many people in my family that have done such amazing things, but I'm also very, very lucky as well. And now your own dad became your coach, mm -hmm. I believe. Now, tell me, how was the experience being coached by your dad? Yeah, so it's a very unique relationship. I feel like it either works or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. We've seen so many instances where it doesn't work. Thankfully for me, Dad and I had a really amazing relationship. We are both Tauruses, we're born on the same day, so we're very similar. And we always just had a really great understanding with one, each, one another. And so I have really fond memories of him being my coach and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. So your memory is going to your very young age. You were the youngest Olympian in the world history. Yeah. Tell me about this Olympic and how young were you then? Yeah, so at the London Olympics in 2012, I was the youngest female pole vaulter to compete at the Olympics. I was 18 years old. Um, it was a very overwhelming experience. It was unexpected at the time. I didn't think that I would get there at such a young age. It was always a goal of mine. But yeah, I got there. Unfortunately, I underperformed. I wasn't happy with how I competed, but I think just being there, it was so overwhelming and I don't think anything can really prepare you for that when you're 18 years old. But I learned so many lessons from that experience and it is one of the most fond memories I have of being a pole vaulter was that London Olympics. Incredible. And then you won the youngest besties. Uh, what is the term? In the age of, I have to go to my notes. So you were 11 and 12, a two world age best. Yes, yeah. yeah, so when you do athletics and whatnot, there's like age world records as okay. you go. So as when I was a little girl, I had the world record for 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, and kind of we would always laugh about it at home whenever I would beat this new world record because it's, it's nothing crazy. But when you're such a little child, it's like so exciting and you're of so course. proud and everyone's talking about it at the dinner table. Of course. Now I'm thinking coming from family of, of athletes and sports, mm -hmm. you know, background, whom did you have, whom post, whose posters did you have in your bedroom or in your dressing room? Wow. Grandma, 
mama, yeah. and sister, whole family. I know, the whole family. Yeah? Yeah, so I feel like when I was a little girl, I probably had posters of, like, Barbie and Britney Spears, okay. and, like, pop stars yes. and stuff like that, because I feel like, for me, that sports world, it was just my world. Yes. It wasn't something unreachable to me. Yes. So I feel like when I was younger, I loved like pop culture and cartoons and I just wanted to be a normal girl, even though I was surrounded by all of and these amazing you people. you Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, and now still staying with your sporting career, the best moments, the biggest highlights first. Okay, biggest highlights. I think generally the biggest highlight would be, I think the London Olympics yes. was really amazing and left a mark on me. And I think just in general, being able to travel the world, doing something that I love mm -hmm. and being able to share that with my dad, my sister, my family. So I'm so lucky that I had a hobby. Yes. That was my job for yes. a period of time. And I got to see so many amazing places at such a young age. And so mm -hmm. just that experience and having those memories, I think is, the biggest thing I'll take away with me from being an athlete. And winning the silver? Yes. So I won a few silver medals yes. as a youth and a junior um, in 2010 and 2011. It feels like so long ago now. Uh, at the Youth Olympics, at the World Juniors and World Youth Championships. Okay. And Tokyo experience, Tokyo Olympics? Tokyo was an interesting one. It was a COVID Olympic Games. Mm. So the memories I had from London, it was nothing like that. So I felt quite disappointed. Um, you know, there was no real atmosphere or vibe. Because the Olympic Games, it's an experience. It's the whole package. And unfortunately at Tokyo, it was go to training, sit in your hotel room, go to competition, sit in your hotel room. Like there wasn't this yeah. electric energy around the village. It was quite bleak. So I'm super lucky I got to go to London and have that Olympic experience. Gosh. And then, unfortunately, with Tokyo being in COVID games, it was a little underwhelming. The challenges, the biggest challenges, the hardships, yeah. we're going to go into it. Because I'm thinking now, a 10-year-old girl, I mean, you have to push all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. You also saw a picture of you having broken leg. Which game was it when you were very young? Yeah, so I broke my leg in April of 2016. Yeah. Right before the selection for the Rio Olympics. Wow. Yeah, so unfortunately, that was a year that I had to kind of step away from the sport and rehab and recover. And it was a very, very challenging time. It was very um, lonely as well. I feel like in that period where I was injured and I had to sit at home on the couch mm. and watch the Olympics, it really opened up my eyes to how much the sport meant to me and how much I wanted to get back and I didn't want to give up just yet. And so from that, it was a massive learning curve for me. Um, and it showed me that I can really achieve anything I want with the right determination and persistence. And I managed to go to another Olympic Games after that. So, Incredible. so looking back in a way, in a way, say. yeah, I think it was a massive moment in my career, in my life, and really a silver lining to my story. I feel like coming from that pit of failure and that dark, dark place and being able to rise from it and mentally and physically push through all those barriers and demons that you have at the time, I think ended up making me a really strong woman and I'm very proud of. So persistence. Yes, persistence. Yes. Determination. How much determination did you have as a 10 year old and then as a 25 year old? If you look at it, did you resent being pushed or being teach to, be, to push yourself all the time? As a very young girl looking at the Barbie, uh, you yeah. know where I'm coming from? Yeah. And your other friends at school mm. lived normal life. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yeah. how you felt? I think at the time I recall wishing that I could just be normal and I could just have sleepovers and go to parties yeah. and eat junk food. But now looking back, I'm so grateful that I had that childhood because it taught me how to be you know, I think I grew up quite early. It taught me how to be 
independent, how to be strong, how to be determined, how to stay focused. And, you know, I'm 29 now and I've achieved so many of these amazing things. And I think it comes from those early learnings as a 10 year old girl where. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. When you're being trained as, a, as an athlete and you go to the huge competitions, Olympics, what is the focus? Be your best or you have to be the winner? Do, do, do you know my mm. question? Because if you're really trying to be your best, 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 you consequently will be yes. hopefully the winner. Yeah. But if you go like, you be the winner, you be the winner, yeah. the disappointment factor has to be huge. And even if you were your best, but you're not the winner, yes. you crash. Yes. Which one, which, which yeah, so strategy me, was in your mind then? Yeah, so my strategy was always be the best that I can be. Yeah. Because then no matter where I finish, whether I come first or I come last, if I've done my best mm -hmm. and tried my hardest, then I can't be upset with the result. Great. So for a long time when I was younger, it was all about winning and I had this mentality that if I didn't win, I was bad and it was, this weird narrative I had with myself. But as I got older, I realized, no, as long as I'm going and I'm showing up and I'm doing everything that I can to improve myself, then the result is what the result is. Some things are out of your hands and you can't get upset if someone else performs better than you. Good on them for performing well. Sometimes it can be exactly. one point. Yes, like one, one centimeter, second. five centimeters, Thank you know. You. That obviously also big luck was a good coaching. Yes, yeah. and I'm giving now back to the old dad yeah. being the coach. I'm sure there are other coaches that push without allowing any space for losing, mm -hmm. without feeling like a loser. Now, I can't even say the word retiring. First of all, I hate this word for whatever mm -hmm. reason. I retire, expire. But in a very young age, just recently, you made an announcement on the social media, new beginnings, you're mm -hmm. stepping away from your sporting career. What was the motivation for it? Yeah, so at the end of 2022, I decided that it was time for me to step away from being a pole vaulter, being a professional athlete. And that decision came off post the Tokyo Olympics. I just felt as though I'd lost that determination, the desire, the commitment. You know, things had shifted in my life where I'm thinking about starting a family and there's all these other opportunities coming up for me. And I'm starting to wonder, well, I can't pursue this if I'm not giving sport 100%. So it was time to weigh things up. And I feel as though I would definitely think I could have performed better as an athlete, but I'm still super content and proud of everything I've achieved. And it just got to that point where I wanted to try other things. I wanted to spread my wings and pursue some other goals. And it's been a really, I'm really happy with the decision. I feel very at peace with my choice. And I'm very thankful that I got to make the decision. It wasn't like I'd had an awful injury and it was taken yes. away from me. Yes. I got to make that choice. And so, yeah, it's been a really exciting six months. Amazing. And how, how supportive was your family, your partner? Mm, very supportive. Yes. I mean, I feel like I went through a bit of an identity crisis at the time because you know, I was the pole vaulter and that was kind of what everyone knew me for. And then I was started to think to myself, okay, well, if I stop pole vaulting, will my parents love me? Will my partner love me? Like all these bizarre thoughts and ideas came to my mind. And then I'd ask them the question and they'd be like, are you out of your mind? Like we would love you no matter what you did. Yeah. Pole vault is something you did. It's not who you are. And so they were very supportive. They knew that I was struggling. They knew that I was ready for a change and they supported me and said, whatever you do, we're right behind you. Great. But you had a few sleepless nights, yes? Yes, I had a few sleepless nights. nights. And now, now we're going to you being the winner mm. of the Australian Survivor. I know. Now tell me how did you go, how did Survivor come to you or how did you yeah. Went up at the Survivor. Never mind. We could talk about the winning journey. So I had always loved watching Survivor as a little girl. And I always thought it'd be something I could be quite good at mm -hmm. because I've got obviously the physical strength. I love playing games. I love doing obstacle courses. So I thought, oh, maybe one day, hopefully I can give it a go. 
And then when I decided to take a break from pole vault, I obviously now had time on my hands and I thought, okay, I'm gonna see if the casting's open, maybe I can apply. So I went to my modeling agent and I said, I really wanna try. And they said, okay, we'll make some phone calls and we'll see. And then a few Zoom meetings back and forth. And then after two weeks, I was on the show and packing my bags and heading off to Samoa. And how was the experience in terms of, of the level of hardship mm. at the survivor. You were watching it for a long time. Did you expect what you what you yeah. experienced? How was your experience? So my experience was the way it comes to you on TV and the way mm. it comes across is quite glamorized and mm. fun and exciting. And the experience that I had, it was so difficult. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. Harder than being an Olympian harder than breaking a leg. Like it was just wow. so challenging. And I didn't realize what I'd signed up for when I got there. And I thought, oh my God, this is real. We're sleeping on the wet sand. We don't have food. We don't have warm clothes. No food. No food for the first four days. Sleeping on the wet sand. Yes. No shower. No shower, no hairbrush, toothbrush pillow, nothing. Like what I'm wearing, you get dropped there and that's it. You deal with it. Okay, so you cope, of course, you coped and then? And then I won. Okay, oh, <laughs> no, it's just like this. It just happened like this that, no. Question, of course. The experience, the everything, the training, yeah. the knowledge of being a sports person, yes. athlete. Obviously, how much did it help you with your survive at your survive on your survivor job? I think, honestly, all of the challenges I've been through as yeah. an athlete, all of the lessons I've learned, all the ups and downs. I think it just gave me all the right ingredients for Survivor to come out as a winner because, you know, Survivor is quite. It's obviously in an individual game. You have to really worry about yourself, and so yeah. it's pole vault. So there was lots of things that were quite similar. Um, and I think, of course, having the physical strength of being a professional mm -hmm. athlete really helped me. Mm -hmm. And also the mental, pole vault is an extremely mental sport. Yes. You have to have no fear. You have to be so confident in yourself. And so I think then going on Survivor and having those skills, it really helped me. And I didn't even realize that I had what it took to be the winner. I was just planning to go on there, try something exciting and new, a different experience. and. Yeah, I just made it. I made it to the end. Tell me, were there moments you were thinking of giving up? 100%. More often than not. Give me most most memorable moments. I think, honestly, the hunger. Like, I was oh. so hungry all the time. Yeah. I didn't know how I could do it. There was days I just cried. And then days, I was. it was like an emotional roller coaster. And so what did you eat when you ate? So when we ate, we had rations of beans and rice. So we'd probably get about a handful in the morning and then a handful at night. And then there was coconuts that we could forage from the forest. Um, you have to pick it up yourself? Yeah, pick it up, yeah. crack it open. Yeah, yes, I remember seeing All of this, yeah. yeah. So there wasn't much to eat and I'm a massive food person. Like I'm, I'm a big eater. Really? Yes. Doesn't I think they show. have a fast metabolism from being yes. an athlete. Yes. So you lost weight? I lost, yes, I lost about 10 kilos. And there was nothing to lose? I know, there was at the beginning. I know. Most challenging moments apart from being hungry. I remember you standing for four hours. I know. Yes? Like, yes. Um, I think most challenging, I loved all the challenges, even mm -hmm. though they were physically tough, it was exciting. I love being competitive. But the hardest thing I think for me was just being completely removed from all of my friends and family. I feel like now we have FaceTime, we have Zoom, Skype, we have all this technology. And when you're out there and you're completely separated, it's really quite scary because when in this 21st century are we without a phone or you know any sort of communication? Yeah. So that was quite confronting. I didn't think I'd struggle as much mm -hmm. because I'm very independent, but just having that complete separation was really hard for me. I really missed all of my family and friends and... And what do you think made you win? You said that certain in the final, final. Yes, you said because yes. I deserve it, your yeah, famous. Yeah, I think my, I don't know, I just think 
everything that I brought to the game. I mean, I was a fierce physical player. I nurtured and had genuine relationships with people. I think my personality really helped me because I'm a very matter of fact, honest person and I tell you how I feel and yeah. I like you or I don't and that's okay. So I think a lot of things led me to winning. Um, but the one thing I think that I did really well was I just focused on each day as it came. I didn't project too far into the future on wanting to win. I just thought, okay, today, if I'm having a good day or a bad day, I'm just gonna focus on these things. And then slowly, the days just passed and I was at the end. So just staying present in the moment, I think really helped me. This, what was your best takeaway from the Survivor, apart from winning huge yeah. amount of money? What was your biggest gain? I think my biggest gain was achieving something I never thought that I could do. You know, I was happy to go there and last a week and have an experience. And the fact that I pushed through all of these really low times of wanting to go home and being hungry and being tired and not sleeping, just so many elements that I didn't think, you know, I'm a, I like staying at hotels. I like going out to restaurants, you know, I like the nice things in life. And so yeah. getting put out in the jungle in the middle of nowhere was very difficult for me. And the fact that I could push through all of those barriers and then come out on the other side just really proved to me that if I put my mind to something, I can do it. The yes. bar goes higher. The bar, yeah, the bar goes higher. What next? Talking bar, I can hear Thermomix has prepared our espresso martini. So are you ready for it? I'm drink? ready. Great. I'm ready. Cheers. Cheers, Barbara. Nice to have you. Nice to have Darling. Mm. So the Thermomix could have no. prepared for us any lunch. And somehow thought we won't cook you any dish with beans and rice. Mm -hmm. So we just have a drink to celebrate your new beginnings. But last thing staying with the survivor, Liz. Yes. Tell me, would you describe yourself? You come across as a very nice person. Was it difficult or how difficult was it for you to become a nasty bitch on Survivor? <laughs> well, I think it did take me some time to understand that it's a game of deceit and backstabbing and being bitch at times. So mm -hmm. initially when people were talking behind people's back and gossiping and making all these moves and backstabbing, it was really difficult for me to be like, I can do this because I felt uncomfortable. That's not how I am in real life. But then once I realized if I'm to get to the end, I yeah. need to start being, you know, a bitch. And so it was necessary and I just always had to remember that it's a game. This isn't who I am in the real world and I'm trying to win. So I just have to do what I have to do. Beautiful. Would you ever consider going back? I would. Initially when I finished the show, it was so much that I thought I don't think I can do this again because it was very overwhelming. But now that time has passed and all the emotions have settled, I would definitely go back. Liz, what would you say is your recipe for life? My recipe for life, okay. I think it would be to be brave, to do things that make you feel uncomfortable because I feel like when you put yourself in that position of discomfort, you can achieve great things. So that would be my recipe for life, is to try things where you're a little bit scared, you're a little bit unsure, and just take the risk. And your recipe for success? I think my recipe for success is quite similar. It's just about stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things and being brave and being unapologetically yourself, you know? standing up for what you believe in, whether that be what other people think or not. I think everybody is different and I think it's really important that we all embrace who we are. Um, yeah, just empowering. I wanna empower women. I want people to feel strong and like, there's no barriers and you can do whatever you want. At least what's next for Liz Parnov? So I'm currently working in the marketing department at my partner's clothing brand, Street X. Yes. Um, so I'm really enjoying that, but I'm actually heading overseas tomorrow 
for five weeks. So I'm very excited for a holiday. Beautiful. I feel, well, yeah, I feel like it's been a very long 17 years of yeah. being an athlete and then survivor and just go, 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 go. So I'm really excited just to slow down for a minute. And then I'll see what happens when I get home. Beautiful. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Is your first station a stop Paris? My first stop is Italy. Italy. Amalfi Coast. And then, Barbara, you're going to send me all your Paris. Tips. Yes, Paris tips, tips. Where to, since I live there. Now, for the, for the absolute ending of our beautiful, beautiful conversation, and thank you, um, I will give you now a magic wand. And I will ask you to tell me what would be your wish for yourself and what would be your wish for the world? Two wishes, magic wand. Okay. Wish for myself would be to have a beautiful, healthy family at some point. I'd love to be a mum and I'd love to give my kids the same amazing upbringing that I had with my family and my parents. And then a wish for the world would be to stop all the war mm -hmm. and conflict and drama that's over in Russia and Ukraine. Because unfortunately my family and people that I really love are affected by it. So I just want there to be peace. Thank you. Let's treat into it and safe journeys. Thank, Thank you. you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you.